Hey guys, I had a quick question here from uh, Brett in our CCNA security class. I'll just read it off. Uh, he says, I've read that mixing up different vendor hardware is a good way to help mitigate attacks. That if I'm using a Cisco ASA and Dell SonicWalls mixed in together to protect my border, that that would be a good idea. I believe the comment I read was that, that it'll make it harder for hackers to exploit the network devices. If all the devices are at the same patch level in OS, then when one system is compromised, that same exploit could be used to compromise other systems. Uh, dropping down to the bottom, he says, I know that this is a Cisco class, but for real world implementation, is it a good idea to mix and match different vendor equipment? Does it really enhance security? Uh, Brett, this is a fantastic question. It's something that, you know, I assume you were talking about this particular slide in CCNA security. We were talking about, you know, applying defense in depth and the weakest link needs to be augmented. We, you know, look at the weakest link, we try to make it stronger, we identify the next weakest link, and then we build on top of that. We say defend in multiple places, build layered defenses, but, you know, in your typical network design, do we often see that? So many customers go with a single firewall not a single firewall. We've got a pair so that we can of course do failover, but like you said, if these are running the exact same patch slash OS level, an attack is gonna go right by. If this is what we consider a next generation firewall, it's gonna have signatures for looking at specific applications. Well, the intelligence that's gonna be in a sonic wall would be different than what you might find in your ASA. And the ASA can, of course, be enhanced with firepower. So this gives us better strength at the application layer. But really, thinking about putting these guys in line is a fantastic idea. Let me talk about why. When I was studying for my CISSP, they talked about using multiple firewalls in row. Um, now, I did my CISSP a long time ago. Um, back then, you didn't really have application inspection. The ASA was around, it might even have been the PICS back then, it was about 13, 14 years ago. But they had these, you know, these, these concepts where they would show, okay, here's how we're gonna build our defenses, and firewall one, firewall two, in case something gets by one, it won't get by the next one. And I thought, that doesn't make any sense. Because we're using simple packet filters back then, you listen, you let port 80 through on the first firewall, you port, let port 80 through on the second firewall, packet's gonna go right through both of them. Having two firewalls didn't quite enhance your security. But the way that you talked about it, when you said exploiting the devices, that's really where the key is. Um, if the you know, patch OS has a vulnerability in it, and someone can attack that vulnerability and perform a denial of service, that one malformed packet would hit this firewall and take it offline. Now, of course, you have failover, but if this is a single packet condition, a second single packet would knock your other firewall offline. Now, everything behind you, your Nexus 7000s, 5000s, your UCS, your VMware infrastructure, it's all disconnected from the internet because you had a single device that failed over to the exact same device with the exact same problem. Now, if I continue, like let's say that this was my denial of service attack. I've uh, discovered different vulnerabilities in the ASA, and I did uh, a talk at B-Sides called Igniting Firewalls, discussing how you find those types of vulnerabilities and trigger these exact conditions. My theory is that if you were, or someone else was a network defender of, of this particular infrastructure, if your firewalls keep crashing, everyone in the business is gonna be upset. Mail's down, phone's down, websites are down, orders can't be placed, and we have to get it back online. And from the attacker's perspective, Every time he throws a single packet at you, the firewall is dropping and there's nothing you can do about it because there's a vulnerability. I found these vulnerabilities, single packet conditions. This was patched years ago, but it was as simple as sending a single packet from a multicast source. When it came into the ASA, when it tried to, and I believe it was a unicast reverse path forwarding process that was trying to resolve the multicast route and when it couldn't, the entire box would just core dump. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the mechanism was that was causing that, but it was causing a, 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 a complete uh, core dump or a reboot um, on that one particular packet. Now, if you fail over, a second packet and you're down. If I continue to send these spoofed packets all day long, your site's never coming back online until you determine that that's what's causing your firewall to fail. It just keeps staying down until I stop doing the attack. That's miserable. If someone did launch that type of attack against you, if they did target you, they determined that you were running ASAs, they came up with vulnerabilities, and they DOS these guys, 
What do you do? Maybe you contact Cisco, you wait for them to write a patch. In the meantime, all of your equipment's down. Now, if we come back to your scenario, where you had a pair of firewalls, these first set were sacrificial. We could go ahead and change IP addressing around as needed and bring these second guys online. Um, alternatively, you know, let's take a look um, over at Cisco's website. I wanted to bring this up just in case you weren't familiar. Um, on Cisco.com, they've got a security portal. You can get there by going to, uh, I use Cisco.com forward slash go forward slash SIO. Um, back when, from when they called this the Security Intelligence and Operation Portal. Um, it starts you off with security advisories. And again, we see multiple open SSL, advisory, uh, open SSL bugs affecting Cisco products. Um, here's something else affecting iron port encryption. Um, here's something else affecting iOS and iOS XE, and it's a denial of service bug. These are found you know, just over the last several weeks. Now, these are highlights. If we come over to security alerts, and I had already sorted by Cisco, we can see we've got denial of service against Unified Communication Manager. How about the Wireless LAN Controller, NXOS? And these are all in the last uh, seven days, you know, that these have just come up. Here's another one, denial of service against Nexus 3000. So when we think about defense in depth, and you think about what Cisco calls network foundation protection, well, think about the core of your network. The network that I do most of my work, uh, my contracting work on, has a pair of Nexus 7010s in the core. And you better believe they're running the exact same version of code. If you had a denial of service attack and you launched it, core one would go down. Of course, all of our services would fail over to core two. 100% of our traffic is now forwarding through this device. And again, a second of the same exact attack would knock both of these offline. Now, what? And I know that some of you network folks out there are going to cringe and hate me for saying this, but what if I took this Nexus 7000 and I paired it with a non-Cisco switch? Now, I would have to fall back to not doing things like virtual port channels, right? I've got no VPC links. Um, when it comes to you know, multi-chassis link aggregation, it's not going to be possible. I'm going to have to go back to you know, probably using MSTP. And I guess you don't have to, you know, if you're on PVST on the Cisco side, like HP can also do PVST. And if there's a bug that exists in Nexus, I would be, you know, absolutely blown out of my mind if that same vulnerability existed on the HP code. It, it just wouldn't, right? Um, now, could there be an existing vulnerability in HP? Yes, but if they wanted to attack your core infrastructure, one attack that would knock out your Nexus 7K would not work against the non-Cisco device. So we could do this, like you said, at the edge. You know, I've done this for years with multi-layered IPS. Um, in the antivirus world, years ago, they called it a sheep dip or foot wash, where you ran multiple AV engines on one computer. Now we've got virus total and similar websites, so we can just send our files there. But when it comes down to looking for attacks, I might use an IPS and I'd say, Okay, I've got Cisco IPS because you know I teach Cisco, but I've also got Tipping Point because sometimes I've got customers that work on Tipping Point. And I've also got Snort because, hey, it's free and I want to check that out. And there's also Suricata, and you can tie into these different IDSs. And what you'll find is that you know one will throw a false positive where the other one will actually identify it correctly. And you will have an attack, but one system may, may misidentify it, and you go, that's not a right attack. So you immediately discard the situation, right? And then your second sensor sees the attack and it does correctly identify it, which gives you the breadcrumbs that you need to actually trace down what's happening. I've had that happen to me before. So uh, just in closing, kind of coming back to your question, is running multiple vendors for fault tolerance and as an additional layer of security a good idea? I'd say absolutely. And this is the type of stuff that's gonna build a stronger blue team. And I say blue team, in terms of the defenders. I, I run the local DEF CON group, I go to all these hacking conferences, and I constantly hear how powerful all the exploits are and how weak everybody's security is. And you know, I think by creative ideas, like the, the types of questions I've got coming in today and by people thinking about situations like this, we can build more resilient networks. Anyhow, thanks for the question and hope to see you in class tomorrow.